to a friend who had declared his intention of writing no more poetry by Samuel Taylor Coleridge Read for LibriVox.org by Algie Pug Perth, Western Australia Dear Charles, whilst yet thou wert a babe, I ween that genius plunged thee in that wizard fount high castily, and sureties of thy faith, that pity and simplicity stood by, and promised for thee that thou shouldst renounce the world's low cares and lying vanities, steadfast and rooted in the heavenly muse, and washed and sanctified to poesy. Yes, thou wert plunged, but with forgetful hand held, as by Thetis erst her warrior son, and with those recreant, unbaptized heels, thou'rt flying from thy bounden ministries. So sore it seems, and burdensome a task, to weave unwithering flowers. But take thou heed, for thou art vulnerable, wild-eyed boy, and I have arrows mystically dipped such as may stop thy speed. Is thy burns dead? And shall he die unwept and sink to earth without the meed of one melodious tear? Thy burns, and nature's own beloved vard, who to the illustrious of his native land so properly did look for patronage. Ghost of Messenus, hide thy blushing face. They snatched him from the sickle and the plough to gauge ale firkins, oh for shame return on a bleak rock midway the aeonian mount there stands a lone and melancholy tree whose aged branches to the midnight blast make solemn music pluck its darkest bough ere yet the unwholesome night dew be exhaled and weeping wreathe it round thy poet's tomb then in the outskirts where pollutions grow Pick the rank henbane and the dusky flowers of nightshade, or its red and tempting fruit. These, with stopped nostril and glove-guarded hand, knit in nice intertexture, so to twine the illustrious brow of Scotch nobility. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.